Welcome back to another early morning Sunday show with my mother. Well, the intro, my mother, she was gracious enough to do part of it. I didn't give her a lot of lines. My mom is 95 years old, still lives in the same house she's lived in for years and years. Lots of stairs, gets long. She goes, you know, I'm not seeing as well or hearing as well. And, uh, but let's go out and uh, I'll drive. I said, what? And you just told me you don't see or hear well and you're going to drive? Well, yeah, she drove just fine. I mean, you know, why not do it? I mean, I like a thrill ride just like anybody else. So, yeah, <laughs> let my 95-year-old mom drive me around just, just for the thrill of it all. <laughs> well, I made it. So, um, hey, great trip. They still had record store day, I heard, even if I wasn't able to participate. Tomorrow I'm going to go around Denver, see what I can find. I have what I want. Hopefully I can find it. And I'll probably show my record store day finds Monday or Tuesday, along with my journey to Denver. Because let me tell you, you want to see this. Because not only did I go to the world's biggest truck stop, I went to the world's biggest railroad yard. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, I know how to travel and do cool things. So we uh, did all that. But we are here. I got my best records here. I did bring my stereo with me. So I hope to hook it up. We don't know when the movers will move us in, but we do pick up our keys tomorrow. So uh, kind of excited about all of this. So. Yeah, we're here. The wife is here. The cat is here. We survived with cat. And the key to cat was don't put them in a carrier. Just let them, let's let them let loose. And all I did was curl up on the floor by my wife and sleep. That was easy enough. So screw those carriers. Cats don't want them. But that's what we got. Now, we got some great records today. This is my last recorded segment of a Sunday show. That's it. Can you believe that? We got through two months of these, but this is my last one. So now I need to hook up my stereo and listen to some of this so we can do next week and we can do it right. So welcome to the early morning Sunday show. Let's 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 show some music. All right, it's that time where we're going to show some records. I got some records. We're going to show them now. I am going to put them up. I'm going to put them in the air. You're going to see them. I'm going to go blah, 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 blah. And we're going to play a sample, and then I'm going to the next. Okay? I think that's pretty simple. So let's do this. First one. One of the one billion Pink Floyd bootlegs coming out. And this is Montrose 1970 Live. Isn't that cool artwork on here? Uh, you know, due to the copyright laws in uh, Europe being a whole lot different, this stuff's getting released like crazy. Some of it sounds great. Some of it sounds questionable. This sounds great. Just on black vinyl. The labels, again, the astronaut. Uh, so this is before the wall. I mean, before the... What is before the wall? That's crit. It's also before the dark side of the moon. Then you have on here... Astronomy, Domain, Fat Old Sun, Embryo, uh, Careful Fat Axe at the Heart, you know, Citra Controls the Heart of Sun, Sauce Full of Secrets, Just Another 12 Bar Blues, um, Simpline, some cool selections. And, and again, the sound quality on this is, is excellent. Uh, Jim, Jim Gleason, uh, who owns the record store, Radio Wasteland, do the podcast, two guys talking about records, got my good plug-in. It's a great podcast, by the way. Uh, and uh, But this was uh, something he listened to. And I, I don't know if I need another Pink Floyd live album. Is it, you know, just another live album. And then he plays it. You know, then he just, well, let me put it on the turntable. Oh, damn him. Damn him to hell, you know? And I go, wow, that's really good. Wow, that, that 
that sounds really, really, really good. And it has some of my favorite stuff on there. So, yeah, I went home with it. Uh, it is excellent. I, it can be found out there. This is being distributed. So many live shows are coming out now uh, out of Europe. Uh, these bootlegs. And there's just a lot of really excellent sounding ones. And Pink Floyd, yeah. The Sonics are excellent on there. Really great stuff. So uh, well worth looking into. We got the, the quitter thing again. I'm a quitter. Time you're watching this, I'm fully immersed into um, running my son's pool shop. So <laughs> I hope I am. Um, if not, I got fired. <laughs> Next, this came in from Vinyl Me Please, and it's, whoa, look at that, holy crap. Oh, boy, that was weird. All right, Vinyl Me Please, it is Gary Bartz, and it is another world. What do I know of Gary Bartz? I knew nothing about Gary Bartz. This was their selection of the month. Do I want it, do I not? Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, he's from Baltimore, born in 1940. He is still kicking. His, uh, his parents, they owned a jazz club. So he was immersed in jazz very early on, became a saxophonist, and went to Juilliard. So he was good. Played with a variety of different people in the 70s. You know, by 22, he was on the circuit. In the mid-70s, he played with Miles Davis. I think he's on Live Evil, but a variety of other uh, albums and was going with it. Of course, the mid-70s was also... Davis's dark period where he locked himself away in a very dark house and made Cicely Tyson kind of serve, work, you know, help him, you know, just whatever. So, uh, yeah, bad time for Miles. But another Earth. So this was in 63, he bought a telescope and he loved astronomy. He was a huge fan of it. So he had this telescope and he's looking and he sees a star and, and the star moves. But it does a figure eight. It's, it's it's a UFO. He swears he saw a UFO, and that was just highly influential. I it's just wow. And so this love of astronomy and this UFO came out on this album. This is the second album that he put out in 1968, and it starts with a 24 minute multi uh, movement title track in another world. And I mean. It gets out there. I mean, it's, there's like free jazz on but guards in there at times. It's just also, you know, the sax starts to squawk and, and everything else. Part of it has structure. Part of it just seems to go off the rails a little bit. Not necessarily my thing, but I'm listening to it, trying to get it and uh, get a feel for it. Because the other songs, was like UFO, the song. And it's just a wonderful up tempo blues that I totally get. I can Get that song. Uh, then there's Dark Nebulous, which is a very mysterious sounding ballad. Get, gets a little bit out there, a little different. Let's call this adventurous music. I think that's a good thing to call it, adventurous music. And there he is on that. And uh, let's see. I think it's just Black Vinyl, nothing special on the vinyl. We'll find out. In case you've never seen Black Vinyl, it is. And related. So, yeah, uh, this is pushing my the limits of my listening, but I'm giving it a try. I'm doing it for Dave, the vinyl ambassador, because he loves that kind of stuff. So I can do this. I can do this. If not, if I really can't stand it, uh, Dave, I'll send it your way. <laughs> This was interesting. This has been sitting at my local radio wasteland for a long time. I really thought it was heavy metal. Didn't know anything about it. My friend Michael Christensen, uh, ML Blue 535, I believe, is his 
YouTube channel. He's a musician coming out with a new album of uh, Michael Christensen. Take a look. Uh, you know, well worth the guy's great. His music's wonderful. Well, he comes in. He had seen this video. I'd done a flip video. And it was one of these Dust albums he wanted. So he came in, got it, loved it. I says, well, what is that? So we, we put it on. And it was like hard blues rock. Oh, God, that's really, really good. And I've seen this cover. I know this cover. I just didn't know the music. I was thinking it's more metal. I mean, look, there's a bunch of dead people, skeletons and crap. So, um, yeah, I, I was expecting something dead, and it wasn't. So, um, Karma Sutra label. Um, he, Michael's thinking about coming back to get this, and I really liked it. And I God, I feel, should I get it or should I get it? Well, I'm leaving town. I don't think Michael can hunt me down. I'm going to be in Denver. I don't know. He might fly out to Denver and get it. I'm not sure, but I got it. So, Blues Rock, Hard Rock, a New York City band formed in 69, broke up in 72. They did two albums, couldn't get any traction, couldn't get any interest, and just kind of went their own way. Uh, yeah, Richie Wise uh, started it, and he brought in two teenagers, one named Kenny Aronson, and another one was Mark Bell. Yeah, really what's kind of interesting is what these people did afterwards. Uh, Weiss and I believe the producer, Kerner, they went on, they produced the first two Kiss albums. Uh, Bell, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Bell, he uh, joined Richard Hell and the Void Doids and was on Blank Generation and then joined the Ramones as Marky Ramone. And that's what people really know. Aronson, he joined the group Stories. And I think he was the one that wrote Brother Louie. I mean, he performs on Brother Louie for sure. So uh, kind of interesting, you know, where they went. But this is great, hard blues rock. It really was really good. Uh, it came out in 1971, self-titled Dust, Dust by Dust. So group is Dust, this is self-titled Dust. And it's just um, great jamming, guitar playing. Uh, the vocals aren't bad either, not bad at all. You have on here uh, from a dry camel that goes on for nine minutes, over nine minutes, almost 10. And that's heavier. In fact, it's almost, you know, they, they kind of put these guys as, you know, one of the early, you know, heavy metal. That's where you can fairly find kind of a more of a metal, heavy metal type feel to the music. A definitely harder charging. You have Going Easy. Uh, yeah, Going Easy, which is a slower blues type number where they slow it down but for the most part just really good hard blues rock yeah this this was this was really really good album uh most enjoyable uh so michael you turned me on to this thank you very much i appreciate it this has been sitting in radio wasteland for a long time no one wanted it and I do those flip videos. Sometimes you see something. Uh, I did one, and uh, when my uh, when Dave Final Ambassador goes, wait a sec, I've been looking for that album. And you know what? These guys ship. Hey, just you can give them a call. So well worth doing. And I had a whole bunch of them. I'm done. <laughs> All right, moving in. Next. Uh, this was recommended to me. Isa, possibly you out there in Boston. Uh, it sounds like something you would uh, tell me about. DMZ. And out of Boston, 75 to 78. Uh, some say this was the liars before they were liars. And uh, this is punk rock and garage rock. And uh, as I say, liars, not the liars. I had, I had, uh, I had, um, uh, dinner and went record shopping with JT from uh, um, uh, from So I Married a Record Collector and you know, we had timing. He goes, you know, Steve, it's liars, not the liars. So I says, but it could be the liars. The liars, not the liars, but the liars. Yeah, well, that's how, that's how you put, put that emphasis there. Doesn't matter. This was great. Um, so, kind of a punk rock, garage rock, uh, 
harder rock, I would say. Uh, they put out the one album. This came out in 78, and uh, Flo and Eddie produced this album. And the label, I don't think I showed that yet, Sire Records. Huh? Ooh, Sire, there's something different. Uh, but it was that kind of stuff that Sire is really going after. And uh, one of the one of the, their earliest drummer, the early drummer was a guy named David Robinson, which, as you know, became the drummer for the Cars. He left uh, Cars. I don't think he was on this album though. Two of the other members, at least two, went on to form, uh, went went in to become part of Liars, that group out of Boston. The vocals on here, they do have a punk edge, but the guitars and drumming are more of a hard rock feel. So it's just this mix where you do have kind of these angsty type vocals, but yet feels more hard rock. There's also the organ, the vocalist, Mono Man is his name, Mono Man, he's the vocalist. And, uh, but he also plays the organ and it just has a total garage rock type vibe going on with that. So you got this kind of mixture of sounds. Uh, this is fun and it's a hard charging music, really good time. Uh, and you know, I hadn't heard any DMZ, so I um, hadn't seen this before. So I ordered it on vinyl, me please. I was up in Traverse City on my final jaunt and with RPM Records. They had two of them, two of them sitting there. That's <laughs> it's like unbelievable. You know, you don't hear about something, can't see it, and there it is. So yeah, easy to come by, very inexpensive album, but kind of great. Uh, again, some hard rock uh, with definitely punk influences, but also garage rock. Kind of like the Liars. Kind of like the Liars. into the 90s, uh, Pale Saints. And this is Loaded. This came out, uh, the group Pale Saints from 87 to 96 out of Leeds, alt-rock shoegaze. They actually began kind of as a jangle band and they were influenced by early Primal Scream, which is also jangly. There's the hype. Nothing special inside of there. And I think the final is clear. And let's see if there's anything special on the sleeves. Have some pictures. So, Pale Saints. Uh, but they're, you know, so they kind of began as jangle, but it began to change. And the music changed more. It became more dark, atmospheric, noisy type pop tunes. Uh, they wound up doing three albums, and this is the first one. Comforts of Madness, that came out in 1990. The vocals on here by um, Ian Masters, is that his last name? <sighs> you know, can never get, they, they don't do a very good job on here. Hold on, let's find out. Ian Masters, let's see here. I bet we would tell me who the heck each person is. Wouldn't you think they would? Uh, yeah, Ian Masters. Hey, I got that one right. Okay, um, he's their... Uh, vocalist and it's more ethereal uh his vocals uh they float they're you know kind of in the background and that's where you get that shoegaze type feel uh, almost like cocktoo twins they take opal you know which later became mazzy star and they do their um, fell from the sun and the, this is a beautiful rendition of it and uh there's just these throughout the album these long languid instrumental passages and then they're mixed in with more of a pop oriented uh type hooks so you kind of get a variety of different things happening but really good uh, filled with washed out guitars hypnotic psychedelic type music the songs flow and they thread together very interesting thing I've wanted a Pale Saints that is considered you know one of the great very early shoegaze bands in in a record store and there it was um yeah just sitting there uh the, the uh 30 year reissue of yeah their very first album comfort of madness fun name <laughs> Yeah. 
this I got at Third Man Records, actually. They gave it to me after that tour. And it is You're Not From Here. Uh, very cool album. It's just on, it's on a colored splatter. And let's see here. Uh, some of these sleeves just do not want to come out. Not want to come out. There we go. Numero. So they did this for the Numero group. And Numero group really does put out some very interesting music. Uh, and some of it's really out there. I mean, very much out there. This one, though, um, it was basically a soundtrack from a show. Uh, Louis Wayne Moody, he had this trilogy that he was um, kind of a mid-century cloak and dagger noir type show it came out in 1964 and it's the it was the exploits of a reformed stick-up man and the name of the stick-up man was the man so this um so these this moody he died and so they're cleaning up his estate they're cleaning things up and up high up on a shelf a very dusty shelf in a grocery bag well, it might not have been a grocery bag on this one it sounds better but they found this they found this tape and it's the soundtrack to that show so it never been reissued never put out and uh numero decided to do it this is filled with tremolo there's tons of reverb and echo going on uh it's dark it's mysterious vocals are kind of typical 60s which you might hear on you know, like on a tv show or a movie uh the female and male ones you know uh you know more almost like an easy listening type vocal but the music is really really cool uh, again you know i thought the vocal sounded dated but the music so dark mysterious just really neat sounding we'll play a track there it just yeah this is cool i <laughs> really totally missed it but that third man they, um, they gave that to me and says there you might enjoy this <laughs> to Roxy music. I've never been a real big fan of rock. I loved Avalon. Ro Avalon was my first Roxy music, so to me that was Roxy music. And then I bought the early albums. Why did I buy the early albums? Uh, uh, let me just admit, there was naked women on them. There were boobs and stuff, so whoa, look at that. Wow, ooh, wow. Uh, now I've gotten older, I've kind of lost that thrill, but uh, well, when you're young. But this is Stranded. And it uh, came out in 1973. I believe this is the first album that Eno was not part of. It's just um, black, the label. Go, stranded. Uh, so this was more done under the direction of Brian Ferry. It still had an adventurous spirit to it, but they were definitely moving more forward into more straightforward songs. It begins with Street Life, which is just a real rocker of a song. And it just, Harry has these real frantic vocals happening. Uh, but then, uh, you know, it gets, um, you know, it goes into like Psalms, which he sounds more tormented when he's singing. But the music, it just builds up, just keeps building up until it finally bursts into a, this into a frenzy at the end of it, just going crazy. Uh, yeah. You find on here the songs really, I think if you listen to the early ones to this, they're more layered. Uh, and there's more piano, especially the guitars and the piano, they're layered in there more. And so you're going to find, I think, more production work. Uh, there's still, you know, a, you know, some stuff that I go, wow, that's a little weird, a little far out there. But they're, you know, they're trying to create their own wall of sound, which really they're doing. They're like their own Phil Spector going on, creating that wall of sound. So 
yeah, I decided, okay, well, okay, this is a nice, clean reissue. We'll give it a shot. Uh, I, I didn't mind it. Am I still, I'm not still a big fan of it, but it's something I think as you listen to, you you know, you can appreciate more. So, yeah, I tried it. I, I, I might try a few Roxy music. It's not that important to me, but if it's at a good price, okay, why not? Finish up. We'll finish up with this. Big Bad Zydeco, Rock and Dupsy, and the Cajun Twisters. I wanted to get, you know, I, I'd shown a while back a Rock and Dupsy that I brought back into my collection that I really love because he's like one of my favorite Cajun. He was the first Zydeco player I ever bought. Uh, and I searched forever as a, um, in my 20s to find it, and I finally did. Well, so I went on, and I, I never see his music. So I tried to, I went on Discogs, and he has all kinds of albums, and they're all released in Europe, except for this one. But guess what? This is a recording from a concert in Europe. So that was interesting. It was in the UK, actually. It's just, this is just straightforward. For, there's this ferocity to the music. It is so good. It just makes you want to get up and dance. Hot, sweaty dancing. That's what you're getting off Rock and Dopsy. Just excellent. Now, he has some slower stuff of kind of a, what is it, touching your trouble in mind. He slows it down, kind of a slow dance number. It's more really blues. But then you have like me and my chauffeur and, and just get up and shake your ass. And uh, yeah, shake your money maker is really what it's all about. On my way back home, soulful type music, cool stuff. I, I just I really enjoyed this man. Um, I love his Zydeco music. He got the washboard going on there. He uses a sax. There is guitar and bass also happening. Great live set. Great live set out of the UK. I wish it's easier. Music was easier to find here. But in the UK, it's all over the place. I mean, he put out a ton of albums out there, that in Europe. So great stuff. <laughs> Think I'm having a great time at work. <laughs> uh, listen to the intro. <laughs> that's that's updated. This has been taped a while back. You can see where I'm at. So obviously I've been gone for a while. But thanks for dropping by and um, see you next week. Bye.